Hey, Chad Madden here with Madden Physical Therapy, and I want to share a quick story with you. Uh, within the last week, I talked with, I was at an event, and I talked with two different people, and they both had the same question, and it was, do I need shoulder surgery? So both looked similar, they were about the same age, uh, both uh, women in their late 40s, early 50s, who had trouble raising their arm, had a lot of shoulder pain, very similar history. And once we got into the discussion, one is going to need shoulder surgery immediately. The other one is likely going to be able to avoid it. So let's talk about that and, and how you can differentiate and decide this for yourself. So the first area that we have trouble with, and this is a quick picture. So this is the arm bone called the humerus, right, right here. And then if you're looking at somebody from the front, this would be the shoulder blade right here. Well, the one that does need shoulder surgery, there's a little ring of tissue right here called the labrum. Right, L, L A B R U M, labrum, and that is right here. And it's a little ring of tissue. If you've ever had like a rotisserie chicken and you tear off the wing, there's that little ring of uh, cartilage. It's the labrum. Okay, so it's that same idea. If you have a tear in there and your shoulder is clunking or um, it feels like it's uh, dislocating or giving out um, or is out of place or out of the socket, anything like that that is likely a labral tear. And typically the only way that that's gonna heal is with surgery. Uh, you can try therapy, um, but it's likely gonna keep happening. Typically it gets worse. Uh, some people even take it to the extent where they have nerve damage or they get joint damage. But if you have a labral tear, you need surgery and typically surgery is earlier rather than later to prevent future damage. The other one that's super common is the rotator cuff. And the rotator cuff is four muscles. The rotator cuff muscles all attached to the shoulder blade and the arm bone. Now there's one specific one that's get in, that gets injured the most frequent. It's called supraspinatus. That's a big fancy term. You don't have to remember that. But we'll see people that have either a partial tear or a fraying or a full thickness tear that are able to avoid surgery completely. And in some of the most extreme cases, we've had people with full thickness tears um, that did not do surgery, did not do injections, they didn't want to take medications, and because of the long recovery after surgery, typically up to six months if you have a full rotator cuff repair, uh, they, they couldn't afford to take that time off, they couldn't afford the uh, loss of income, uh, so they would just want to do PT, and most of those people are able to avoid surgery. Now, there's a lot of other healthcare problems going on, and that's beyond the scope of this video, um, yeah, that can certainly affect it. There are extreme cases where it's not only the rotator cuff that's damaged, but there's other tissue involved as well, uh, like the biceps tendon or the labrum. Typically, that person, if it's really, really complex, they might need surgery. But a lot of people, unless you're a baseball pitcher or competitive athlete that's throwing and you have a rotator cuff, partial tear, or even a full thickness tear in some cases, you're gonna be able to avoid surgery. So anyhow, just to recap, do I need rotator cuff? or do I need shoulder surgery? If you have a labral tear, you likely need it um, earlier rather than later. And then if you have a rotator cuff tear, sometimes uh, if it's a full thickness tear, and most often if it's a partial tear, you can avoid surgery altogether. This is Chad Madden, thank you for watching.